As I say, it is a pleasure and a great honor to introduce General David Berger, the 38th Commandant of the United States Marine Corps. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Please sit down. Please, please. Happy birthday, Marines. Happy birthday. Actually, uh, I think we were reminded by uh, Jake and Zach, there's actually two birthdays going on, the 25th birthday also, which is a super one. So congratulations to uh, um, our host tonight at our table for 25 years. That's pretty amazing too. I got to tell you, uh, this is a pretty special evening for me and Donna, and there's a lot of reasons why, but as I told uh, Jerry on the way in, uh, this is our last year being the Commandant, so uh, it is really special to be here with you this evening, and I can't thank you enough for not just the invitation, but the warm reception each year that we've come here. And although it, pretty typical, you heard three Marines up here earlier, one at a time, uh, give credit to the other Marine uh, for organizing this, for pulling it together. So from me, the senior Marine here, to Jerry, to Zach, um, to Jake, thank you for organizing this. Thank you for pulling it off every single year in a, just a first-class fashion. <laughs> this is 247 years, uh, as you saw. Uh, this is a perfect venue, right? And if you're a Marine, uh, which everybody in this room is, nothing makes you happier than going aboard a ship that you do not have to live on for six months. It's just <laughs> awesome. It's really awesome. Uh, this room just uh, filled with uh, Marines uh, that I look up to. All of us wearing a uniform, privileged enough to wear the uniform now, really look up to. You feel like you're in a room uh, full of giants. Pretty humbling for me. Karen Gunther. Uh, Thank you from me to you for the Semper Five Fund. Absolutely. Thank you also, uh, Karen, for the Marine Corps Marathon Bling, which I picked up last week after running the marathon, not before it. So th thank you for all, the, all that you were and the team did last weekend for the Marine Corps Marathon, because he had, how many runners did you have last weekend, Karen? How many? Yes, amazing. Amazing. There's, uh, it's, if you're somebody like me and you walk into this room and you see the set of diverse personalities in here, it's amazing. But the reason you're all here is the common cause, right? That's the flip side of that coin. We are all here with one common cause and people like Karen taking care of Marines lifelong. You heard her say it, and as long as I have a breath, right? Uh, congratulations kind of in advance to uh, both uh, Rob Riegel and Montel who are here with us this evening. They're going to get a uh, presentation later on. Most of you, I'm guessing, have seen uh, both of them plenty of times before. But if it's been a while since you've seen the Berkeley skit from Rob, you got to go back and look at it. <laughs> it's timeless. Just worth a look. Just type in Rob, Rob Riggleman and Berkeley and you'll... Grab a beer and you, it'll be really good. Um, and just a reminder for those two, I don't know where Rob is, but I know where Montel is. Uh, they, everybody in here knows that the title, like Marine for Life, is not, of course, just a title. Um, the, it, that, that award and the two awards that they're going to get uh, comes you know, with it kind of a lifelong contract. So for both of you two, for Montel and uh, for Rob, where's that? Colonel Weiler at. He's right up here. Okay. So for both of you two, since you're lifelong Marines, you are welcome back into the reserves this evening. We have <laughs> Colonel Rob Weiler has your reenlistment contracts right there. So we have a little bit of paperwork to catch up on later, later this evening. Uh, Montel, the, uh, the shave though, we got to do something about the whole grooming standard. Okay. Back, back to being a Marine. Um, I joke a little bit, but you all, everybody in this room knows that you are a Marine for life. As soon as you, as soon as 
the drill instructor puts the Eagle Globe and anchor in your hand. And it doesn't matter, I think, my learning over time is regardless of what you do after you take off the uniform, you carry with you the title of Marine for the rest of your life. And everybody in this room that has worn the Eagle Globe and Anchor knows that it is different for us. You can join the Army or the Air Force. You can join the Navy. You cannot join the Marines. You must become a Marine, and you will always be a Marine. Um, thanks to all the Marines that are in this room, left the service, but still, you know, you hear the stories this evening, still continue to uphold the, the Marine Corps values of honor, courage, and commitment every day of your life. I am very grateful for that. I am really grateful, as Jerry mentioned, that we're back in person. Having been the commandant who's lived through the beginning, great year, next two years, COVID, come to New York, now we're back in person. It's really good to see. So I hope you agree with me, better in person, right? Much better. The Marine Corps birthday ball is not, it, it's not really, if you, it's hard to describe to other people who are not Marines, but to us, it's more like a family reunion than it is a, a ball. And I mention that because it really doesn't, it happens around the world, right? Anywhere there are Marines, you're going to have that get together. And face to, face to face, like we're doing this evening, and this is the first Marine Corps ball of the season for me and Donna, being face to face, I tell you what, I am never going to take that for granted ever again. I think I did for 41 years, but never again. Um, I also think that the last few years, though, of not always being able to get together taught us, retaught us some things that we probably knew all along. Birthday ha a birthday for us happens every year, ceremony or not, every year. Because it's not about where we are, right? It's about who we are. Whether it's here in New York, anywhere in the globe, doesn't matter. Wherever there are Marines, we're going to stop for a minute Somebody in the squad, somebody in the unit is going to read General Lejeune's message, and we're going to cut a cake, no matter where you are in the world. And it might be a cake, out of, like a pound cake out of an MRE or Jerry and a sea rat, right? <laughs> Which Jerry can confirm they had pound cake back in the day, came in a green can, and you needed a P-38 or a John Wayne to open it, but it was still a cake. You might talk to Jerry about about a menu for a sea rat cake, might ask that. For that moment though, for that moment when we're cutting the cake and, and we're all together, whether you're active duty or not, Marines, all of us stand just a little bit taller, we hold our heads just a little bit higher, and you remember every Marine who has earned the title, right? Because it isn't about the uniforms. It's not about the guest of honor, it's not about a cocktail hour, it's about our traditions. It's about our heritage as Marines. It's about taking a second and you remember all those Marines who came before you and me celebrating everything that we have achieved together. And the traditions, the great traditions of commemorating our birthday, that's, what, that's the kind of thing that binds us together as Marines. Doesn't matter your rank, it doesn't matter your occupational specialty. It doesn't matter active or retired. We all celebrate that common bond as Marines. And we celebrate it just like our forefathers did. And I am absolutely convinced we're going to celebrate it 247 years from now. We know, all of us know, does it, through peace or war, the Marine Corps and its traditions, were, they will endure. And it's going to endure because Marines of every age have dedicated themselves, you all have, to the preservation, to keeping our culture, our ethos. This year, we lost a couple of giants in the Marine Corps. You think about Marines like Herschel Woody Williams, Sergeant Major John Canley, two iconic giant Marines. They made 
indelible marks on the history of our core, on the heritage part, right? But yet, if you're a Marine, you know that even though they passed, even though we lost them this summer, both of them, their legacy, their legacy lives in inside every Marine who's wearing the uniform, every Marine who's ever put his boots on the yellow footprints. Because each and every Marine, individually, they share an equal part in the stake of our Corps, and it doesn't matter your rank. Every Marine plays a role in the future of the Marine Corps. I am incredibly proud just to stand in this room with you all, and I'm telling you, we are in very good hands. While we're sitting in here on the Intrepid, you should, when you go home this evening, brush your teeth, you should put a big smile on your face in front of the mirror because there are Marines around the world that you would be happy to fight alongside of. They know how to fight and win anywhere, anytime, any climb in place. And I can't, myself, I don't know of a time in history when we have been more prepared as Marines, and we need to be. They're more fit, more educated. They're as tough, as disciplined, as experienced as Marines of any generation. And you would be proud to put on a uniform and stand right next to them. I am. Tonight, I checked this morning on the daily operations and intel update that I get. Just under 31,000 Marines deployed, which is pretty typical. But it's a good thing for you and me to remember we're having a great evening in here. You know why we can have a safe, great evening? Because there's 31,000 Marines keeping the wolves away from the door. They are in, this morning, 50 different countries. Isn't that amazing? Your Marines are. They're on ship. Some of them are ashore. They're out there at the edge so we can have a great evening here this evening. They're training. They're experimenting. And most important, I would tell you, they are learning. And they are ensuring that regardless of time or place, Marines will be ready. And they are. There's a wide range of events. You follow the news like I do. All of the combatant commands, which are the regional kind of commanders around the world, in Europe, in Africa, in the Middle East, in the Pacific, every one of them knows one thing. When there's a crisis, they're going to call the Marines. They want Marines. They want your Marines. They want them. They're in such high demand because the one thing that our nation knows when everything else seems to go to hell in a handbasket is when you send in the Marines, they will get the job done. They always have. They always will. That is our legacy, right? Earned by the Marines and the veterans in this room. So tonight, enjoy the evening. Tell some stories. Try maybe even to sprinkle some truth in those stories, <laughs> occasionally, from time to time. Have a piece of cake. Have your favorite drink. Have a beer. Have whatever your favorite drink is with the people that you love, your brothers and sisters in arms and your families. Because tomorrow, tomorrow we get back to work. Defending the title that once earned can never be taken away. Semper Fidelis and happy birthday, Marines. Hooray!